Hello, hello friends. How are you doing today? My name is Mary. This is Happily Ever Esh and today we are talking unread books on our shelves. The just book lovers problem. Yes. So my lovely husband helped out with this video. You will see some clips of him later. So very grateful to him. But I was inspired by the Unread Shelf Project, which is a huge thing on Instagram. It's ran by Whitney at the Unread Shelf. That's her Instagram handle. I'll link her down below. She's lovely. She's also a fellow Missourian, so I love that. Well, at least I think she lives in Missouri, Kansas City area, um, regardless. But yes, I do quite enjoy her content. I love her focus on the Unread Shelf. She's definitely an encourager for me to, um, my kind of project that I'm doing this year is really focus on my Unread Shelf, which I must say is going quite well. It's been um, a goal for the last couple years and to actually um, have some success, I'm pretty proud of myself. But in March, they're doing the seven days of unread books where you go to your shelf, you pick a random book, and you chat about it, where you got it, why you bought it, um, if you plan to read it. So yes, I, um, with the help of my husband, chose seven books, and I'm just here to chat about them. So we'll go ahead, roll those clips of him helping me choose my selections, and then we will come back and chat about them. <laughs> All right, pick a number between one and 30. <laughs> 26. <laughs> All right, I need a number between one and a hundred and fifteen. Six. Okay, between one and one hundred. 37. A number between one and 100. 19. Okay, a number between 1 and 90. 89. Okay, between one and sixty. Thirty one. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, thank you Mary from the past and Brandon. I just took a really long pause, like I was actually waiting on myself to go choose the selections. Um, so I've kind of challenged myself with not doing too much research about any of the books before. Just this is kind of my off the cuff um, chatting about the book. Hello, this is Mary from the future to tell you that um, I'm kind of out of shot in some of this video. You can't really see my book, so I'm gonna be doing some cutaways where I um, put the cover of the book so you can look at it um, before I start chatting about it. But I've been trying to do something different with my setup and to use my back camera, and I'm just not succeeding. So I will continue to try. But part of this challenge was to talk about the books kind of off the cuff, and so I don't want to redo it. So if the the bad angle, too close face, not being able to see the book is gonna bother you, please watch a different video because there's nothing that I'm going to do to fix this one, but future videos I will try to be better. All right, that's it. Back to past Mary. <laughs> So the first one that um, his little number correlated with was Women of the Word, How to Study the Bible with Both Our Hearts and Our Minds by Jen Wilkin. I picked this up when I was still living in Hannibal, 
um, we did a women's fellowship monthly. Sometimes we would do book selections. And so Jen Wilkin has written another book called None Like Him, which was our actual selection, which I got halfway through. I didn't actually finish it. Still on my shelf, still would like to read it. But when I bought it off Amazon, they suggested this one and I don't know, it was probably cheaper um, if you bought them both. So I did. This is one I definitely still want to read. Um, I did like um, None Like Him, the parts that I read in her, her other books. So yes, I definitely plan to pick this one up. It's very short, um, but typically more theological Bible study type books do tend me tend to take me a little longer to finish just because I go really slow and I try to um, pray over the passages and I talk to God, ask him that he's like would help me um, learn um, and glean a lot from from the book. So yes, they tend to be a little slower reads, but definitely one that I would like to pick up. So I don't know a lot about this, but would definitely like to read it and learn some more. So yes, that was our first pick. And that shelf holds more of our books um, about Christianity, theology, the Bible. So it was not a surprise that one of the, um, a theological book was one of my selections. All right, book two is Mr. Penumbra's 24 hour bookstore by Robin Sloan. I picked this up at a library's little used bookstore. Again, when um, we were still living in Hannibal, this one I picked up because it was a beautiful hardcover for a couple dollars probably. I had heard people on booktube talking about this. It was when I had just was either thinking about starting my channel or had just started my channel and I was buying a lot of things that I was seeing people talk about just because it was exciting and to find a book that people raved about for just a couple dollars, I just couldn't help myself. But this one has kept it on my shelf and made the cut of many um, unhaulings. I think this is a little magical realism. It's definitely a book for book lovers. And yes, I do still plan to read this one. I think I might try to pick it up on audio. I know Robin Salone's other book, Sourdough, was also been, has also been really well received. So definitely one I still plan to read, but one that I probably need to kind of get on or get rid of just because I have owned it for many years. Um, so yes, encourage me to read this one. Um, it's definitely one that I'm, I'm interested in and like the cover is just so lovely. So that was a, an exciting one when I found it, I know for sure. So I definitely need to get on with reading it. All right, our next shelf is a big of a chunk, bit of a chunky book, one that I have started reading and definitely want to, but am a little daunted by, and that is Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurdy. Again, picked this up when I was living in Hannibal at that same little library used bookstore. And yes, I believe there was a read along for this, which maybe um, prompted my interest in this book. It is a classic Western novel, which has a very famous movie. It was the Pulitzer Prize winner and lots of people really rave about this book, even people who really aren't that into Westerns. And so yes, I do love this beat up mass market paperback, but there is a beautiful redone kind of, I don't know if it's an anniversary edition, but I will put it here that I've thought about buying a few times just because it's so beautiful and I feel like the font would probably be better to read. But yes, I am very interested in this. One that I'm, I may pick up on audiobook, I feel like it's so epic in scope um, that I think it might be a good audio listen. So let me know if you if there's an audio version or if you've listened to it on audio. But yes, one that I definitely plan to read. And I think I'll always keep this copy, especially if I read it and like it just because it is battered and you know, it's got that beautiful bent, well loved look to it. And I just think I do think the cover is really cool. It's just flipping through and I do I have it sectioned off into um, month. So yes, I did plan to read it. And this is an almost thousand page edition. Yikes. Next selection, another booktube darling, and that is Burial Rights by Hannah Kent. Again, I think I picked this up at that same library used bookstore. It was one of my favorite um, places to buy books. It was right down the street from where I worked. So I probably popped in way, way, way too much. But this was a booktube darling a couple years ago. It has a very evocative setting. Um, I think a very evocative storyline. We are following our um, main character who is the last woman to be sentenced to death in Iceland, I believe. Yes, in Iceland and we're following her story. Um, the atmosphere, which I love books with a very strong sense of place, um, is said to be very strong in this book. And so yes, one I definitely plan to read, but again, 
need to get on. I'm almost like was waiting out the hype, but now the hype train has like left the building. It's far beyond me and I need to to get on reading this book. So again, give me some encouragement to read this book. She since has another book that's been published and I believe was well received too. So yes, I need to get on it. All right, my bottom shelf that I ended up having to go up into my second shelf because I gave my husband too many um, numbers is a nonfiction pick and that is Hometown by Tracy Kidder. I picked this up in my favorite used bookstore in the town that I live in. This is a nonfiction surrounding one town and I think it's kind of almost like a character study or a study of this place which yes that ticks all my bo boxes sign me up it is a small town setting I grew up in a small town so absolutely still want to read this book never heard anyone talk about it so I'd love to know if you've read it and if you have thoughts on it I've never read any Tracy Kidder either and I know he's a pretty prolific nonfiction author so yes, maybe this can be a nonfiction November pick, though I do tend to put books off until other times when I think it will be convenient to get to them and then don't get, the, get to them in those more convenient times. So we'll see. And then last but certainly not least, one on my little book cart, and that is a middle grade, so very fitting for middle grade March, which is Chains by Lori Halsey Anderson. I know that she writes historical fiction middle grade. I picked this one up at a Goodwill. If you cannot see that there is a definitely theme with where I get my books, and that's used bookstores and thrift stores, um, but I'm totally fine with that. I love a good, cheap book, and I'm sure many of you can relate. But I believe this is set during the Civil War. It was a National Book Award finalist, so that gives me lots of hope for this book, that it'll be a great one. So yes, I didn't put it on my middle grade March TBR this year, but one that I do hope to get to sooner rather than later because I've heard great things about this author. And maybe I said middle grade, but is it YA? I really think it's middle grade, but um, I will put um, a footnote in the comments if it's not middle grade and I am wrong. So yes, friends, that's my stack of random unread books from my shelves. This was such a fun project and I think I might make it a little bit of a series. I love to feature books from my shelf and I don't think I've talked about hardly any of these on my channel before. So I hope that you enjoyed. Please go check out the Unread Shelf Project on Instagram. Whitney's just a gem. So um, I definitely get very encouraged and inspired by her channel and all of her love for her Unread Shelf. So yes, hope you guys are having a great day and I will talk to y'all later. Bye. <laughs> Why is this so uncomfortable? <laughs> Look at this cat. Oh my. That's, that's probably the cat that ate the chicken.